Hey everyone, my name is Legend Ronnie and this game is Rise of Civilization. Today I'm going to continue my series of spotlight video and I'm going to talk about G or that name on top of there that you can see or this guy in the background. This is the commander that I'm going to talk about, give you my tips and advices, tell you the best I know about him or how I would advise you to use him. Now before I go any further into his skills, before this is gonna go away I'm just gonna attack this one and I'm going to explain it why. Now unfortunately that one is moving, I hope it's not going to move too much. The main reason why I'm attacking this one before I'm going to talk about his skill is because I was waiting for this to happen because Isyong-G main skill does a fun shape area damage so that means he's going to hit multiple targets. So now you're going to see what I'm trying to say about. Now you see that he hit two targets and I only spent action points attacking one target so this is the main skill of G, the red damage that you see on the, on the screen that is the damage from G. now in order to kill both of these guys once you manage to group attack them you have to use the camp button so that your richard or your main commander whichever it is is not going to run away so now you're noticing that I'm going to finish this one and I only spent action points for one Barbarian. But I'm actually defeating two. So this is what the main skill of Isyong G does. It does damage to the group. Or to that particular fan shape area that you have seen. So let's go back into Isyong G. And let's talk further. So that was his first skill that you have just uh, seen. Direct damage factor of unfortunately only 1000 but it's up to 1400 when it's maxed out. Now you already see that he's a Nuka defender and archers are not highly down with that defender skill but it might be proven otherwise later on into the game. As a nu Nuka and archers, yes I highly agree because his second skill. For 3 seconds, a 100% Archer attack bonus, that is freaking insane ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to max Ision G out, considering his 4th skill and considering his last skill, Ision G is going to be the most stronger nuker in the game available. So he's going to be the most terrible and fearsome commander if in the game if you ever manage to max this dude out uh, that's it no more to talk about him about his skills if you want to obtain his sculptures I have to give you a fair warning first of all you need 10 to summon him 10 unique ones for him to summon then you're going to need 50 more to upgrade his first skill now this is something that I advise on any commander any legendary epic commander that first thing you should do, you should upgrade their first skill before you start leveling him up and unlock his other skill. First skill is usually the most important one on any legendary and epic commander. So first max out his first skill, keep him at one star, then proceed forward with his skills. Now, as I mentioned, you need 10 to summon him and then you might want to know how much you need to max him out. Well, you will need a total of 690. That is 690, so that is correct. You need a total of 690 to max him out after you summon him. If you count the summon, that's 700 in total. And you will need either specific sculpture or the universal one which you see them on the left. So you can see if I press, it only says that I can obtain him from the universal sculptures. Now you might be wondering how I already got some of his cultures and that is because I was very lucky in the gold chest. I have to say some people said that it doesn't drop in, in uh, advanced servers or the new servers. Well in my server Kingdom 16 I got him from the gold chest. I never spent any other sculptures on him than the, one, the ones I got from my gold chest. Right so that's about his skills. I already showed you what his main skill does 
and imagine that his main skill was doing that amount of damage without his fourth skill. And I was using him with Richard the Finn. If you are going to be in a group of fight and you are going to hit uh, five targets with with Isyong G, full nuker path, a lot of troops with him, uh, that will be a tremendous, tremendous amount of damage. Your enemy will run away in fear. True story. Now let's talk about him forward. Since I already have a six star legendary commander, I want to give you a fair warning that you will need a roughly of 450 give or take legendary stars in order to max out his 6 star so from 5 to 6 star you're going to need a, a roughly of 400 450 legendary stars so this is why i want to give you a fair warning because i have done my first one and i'm nowhere near close to get my second one so that's why you might want to think about which commander which legendary commander you might want to max out because it's very very important to have six star legendary commander at least one don't just throw your stars left and right because it's not it's not going to be good <clears throat> now that would be about about his skills about his stars uh, about about his levels he can do very good as secondary commander it's not going to be a problem if you want to group him up with another commander now you might be wondering who is going to be best in slot for for him or who would he who would be the best commander for him well i would say that being a nuker he's going to be do very very well with another nuker if we look at kusunoki or yeah if we look at kusunoki we can see that he does a as well direct damage factor and additional damage factor in a fan shape area as well so they both are doing fan shape area that means they are both going to do aoe damage so one of the best combination for isyong g would be him if not the best it has to be proven in order to be the best but this combination i will try to use because they are both archers first of all they both boost the damage of archers and then the third one they both do fan shape area damage another commander that does fan shape area damage is sun tzu but sun tzu is also infantry so you might cannot boost the archer as much as you would like plus kusunoki being an epic you will be able to max out kusunoki to obtain his expertise and get a lot more for your archers if you plan to bring only archers Plus, being an epic is going to be easier to six stars, and then Isyong Ji could be a second in command. And there you go, you have a very nice pair of full archers commanders that will be terror that will terrify your enemy on the battlefield. But if you want for only nuking purpose, Isyong Ji could also work with Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, if you max him out, it hits as well five targets so imagine when they go they both start to pound your enemy with rain of arrows and book of ounce if i'm pronouncing it right that's going to be aoe aoe that's going to be a tremendous amount of damage and one thing that you should keep in mind before you want to try one of these setups you should not be the one that tanks damage so you should not be the first one that engage in direct combat with this particular setup you might want to be let someone else with a much tankier setup to go in first and then you should go in as well but hitting five targets in the same time you're going to do a lot of damage you already seen the barbarians how devastating he was now another combination with him and uh, it might sound a little bit ridiculous it might say dude you're crazy what are you doing you don't think straight but it's richard the first and uh, i'm gonna break it down to you why would be richard the first and this is how i'm going to try it i personally i'm going to try this setup because i already have richard the first and exactly what i need from richard the first now why I'm saying that, you've seen that I already used it. First of all, you should know that 
the damage frag factor from every nuker. This direct damage factor is getting modified by the amount of troops that you have. So the lower troops you start having into a battle, the less damage the nuka does. So what exactly do you want into a battle? Exactly, you want to keep your troops count high. Now you already seen the amount of heal that Richard I does. If not, you can check in some other videos of mine, but you can already go back when I talk the barbarians and you can see that my troops count was keep going high and was still keep staying high because of the Richard I skill, because of this particular skill from Richard I, which also does a fan shaped area and debuff your enemy. So there is this again double doing. So first you're going to keep your troops count high. Second, you're debuffing your enemy to do less damage. Third, you're going to do a tremendous amount of area damage. But that would require that one of these two commanders have the new Carpat. And obviously my Richard is very close because I only need him at level 38 to obtain that particular new Carpat. So there you go. I can create a very powerful AoE group that will be devastating. And this is the main reason why they would work together, because Richard I will be able to keep up the troops. But again, even if I'm using Richard I, I would not engage him in direct combat, because they would not have that much defense together. So that they will still have to be the ones that enter the combat after some other tanking commanders went in. <clears throat> now, let's see some other viable options for Lee Seong Ji. If there is no other options, let's say you're in the starting of the game and Lee Seong Ji dropped, you were lucky and got his skills, let's say, three or four times and you want to start using him. In the early levels of the game, you could also group him up with Tomoe. Because Tomoe third skill is also going to boost the damage of Lee Seong Ji. So if Tomoe is going to be the second in command to Lee Seong Ji, Tomoe is going to increase his main skill damage by another 15%. But I would use Lee Seong Ji very very limited because of the amount of fanship area that he does so he can attract too much attention. So the amount of groups that I would group him with is pretty much limited at the beginning. But as I mentioned, when he is going to be maxed, uh, he is going to be the strongest nuker in the game. So at that point, he can be grouped with almost any commander at that point. But until then, his use is very, very limited. I would group him with other commanders that do group and area damage or Richard I. This is how I'm going to try it in the early levels with Tomoe Gozen. Now where you can use East Young G, my strong advice would be only Barbarians and PvP. I would not advise you to use him in, in Rally or, or anywhere else. Obviously Barbarian Force, they are easy to go down, it's not going to be any problems. But uh, Rallying or Sieging, that requires a little bit much much better commanders for that particular task. I have to say that I'm pretty pretty impressed about him but until I upgrade his skills there is nothing much I can do about him. I cannot test him any more further. His only first skill is at 3 out of 5 so until I make that 5 out of 5 I cannot do more testing or use him more in battles. So until then when I can actually prove you how good he is or how tremendously powerful he is. This is Legend Ronnie and I'll see you guys on the next video and I'm telling you peace out yo.